Airsoft Discussions Episode 2. I decided to name it Airsoft Discussions just because it's not just going to be gear. It'll be general discussions, kind of like how Gun Gamers does it. But um, I'm going to do it in a more on-track way. I'm going to stay more on track this time rather than going into different tangents about nonsense like last video. Because last video, I confused myself when I was editing. So I'm, I'm going to try not to do that this time. So, And I also have a backdrop instead of just my messy room. It's just a gray sheet, but it, it works. I mean, you don't need a fancy green screen to do discussion topics. So today, I'm going to be talking about how to pick your airsoft sidearm or handgun. So today we have two guns. I have my Elite Force 1911. It was just painted. There's nothing different on the inside. It's all stock. I just painted it. So, and then I have my brother's M9, by it's his KWA M9 PTP Tactical, it has the tack rail on it, the normal one does not, I'm not going to talk about that right now, but it has a tack rail, that's the only difference if you hear PTP tack or PTP, or Professional Training Pistol by KWA, and this gun is full auto, so on a video, it wasn't before, so if you buy the stock version, it's not going to be full auto, so this is a good, a really good sidearm right off the bat, if you just if you buy it brand new so different ways of picking your sidearm are what you like I if you like a certain look of a gun if you really like a certain model or if you're looking for specifics in a gun for performance or anything like that so when I picked my Elite Force 1911 I live in New York so I picked a CO2 gun because CO2 works in the cold if you don't know what CO2 is if you're just really brand new and you have no idea what I'm talking about these are CO2 cartridges. They go in the magazine like this. You unscrew that Allen wrench. Uh, the Allen wrench. Allen. You take an Allen wrench that comes in the box and you unscrew that screw. It, it loosen this and you can pop this out and you put another one in. Screw it till it doesn't leak anymore and then you're good. Goes in the magazine like that. So if you're absolutely new and you don't know the counterpart to CO2, there's green gas. This gun runs on green gas. So, well, green gas is, is, it's a mixture of propane and silicone, I believe. So, it comes in a nozzle like this. I'm not going to fill this mag, actually, because I don't feel like emptying it later, but there's that hole there. So, what you do is you put this in that hole and push down until you'll hear a leaking sound, and until that, stop, that sound completely stops, then your magazine's full, and it's ready to go. So, the pros and cons between... CO2 and green gas. So the pros to CO2, it's really easy to get a hold of. It's in Walmart. Like you can just go to Walmart and go to the hunting section with all the BB guns and buy CO2 canisters in a big box. A box of 25, I believe. I bought a, pa a box of Daisy CO2 cartridges. There's 25 of that. It was a 25 pack for $11, I believe. So and with some change. And you, at least in New York, you have to be at least 18 or older to purchase these. Um, so I just have one of my parents do it. Like, I just give them the money and we'll just go. You figure it out. But you have to be 18 or older to purchase these. Um, they're really cheap. They're not, they're not hard to get a hold of. Any, I'm pretty sure Runnings sells them if you live near Runnings. Cabela's, if you live near Cabela's, Cabela's should definitely sell them. If they don't, I'd be really surprised. But Walmart sells them, any hunting store sells them, like, any outdoor store should sell them. I don't know if Tractor Supply does if you live near Tractor Supply, I don't know, but they probably do. Don't take my word for it, but, um, other perks of CO2, I don't know if I mentioned this, they work in the cold, like, I was playing with my brother on my mom's property, it was 13 degrees outside, CO2 works fine, works fantastic, so you can use CO2 in any weather condition. It probably works a little bit better in the warmth, but you don't really notice it in the cold. So, these work, these are good for any weather, and they just work really well. And they're easy to get a hold of, and it's easy to put in. And <clears throat> with CO2, you get a harder kick. So, if you're looking for more realism in your handgun, and you really want that blowback function to really kick back, then CO2 is the way to go, because they have, there's, they got a hard kick and everything. So... Those are the perks of CO2. Green gas does not work in the cold. If it's lower than, depending, sometimes you can get it to work if you're really lucky. 
but if it's below 30 degrees, even if it's 30 degrees, it's probably not going to work. Just because the gas is held, it's not as, it's pressurized, it's not as pressurized, I don't think. But it's held in the, there's a canister inside the magazine. When you put that can in here, it transfers to the, this, and when it gets cold, it condenses really easily. CO2 doesn't do that as much, but green gas, if you fire shot after shot, it's going to condense the gas really easily, and you're not going to get the pressure you want out of it. So, if you live somewhere warmer, like Texas, California, any really western side or southern side of the U.S., then you're probably good to go. Because you can get green gas to work in the cold, it's just more difficult, and it's not as reliable. You don't want to pull your sidearm out and go to shoot, and your gun just goes... Because it's not working, it's going to misfire. Um, you can use propane, however. I'll probably do a different video of propane versus green gas and stuff like that. But propane, you can buy those blowtorch canisters and buy an adapter for them. You have to oil your gun more, though, because propane is a really, really dry gas. Like CO2, you have to oil this gun every time Like you go out the night before. You oil it. I mean, you should maintain any gun like this, but the night before you go, oil and clean it, especially the magazine. When you get home after that day, take it apart, clean it, oil it, just to be sure that it keeps those seals good. Because if you don't, the seals are going to leak and your gun's not really going to work anymore. But lucky for this gun specifically, you can buy rebuild kits online. I'll also go over that in a different video, but just to get that information out there if you're really new. But propane works, I believe, a little bit better in the cold. I've been, I've never used it in the cold. But all my friends that run propane says it works better than green gas in the cold. Probably because it does get a better kick because it's not a mixture. It's more pressure. But one, green gas is super flammable. So you have to be careful with that. You don't want to be shooting it like an idiot near any campfires or anything because the gun will probably blow up in your face. And two, it just it doesn't work very well in the cold. And propane smells. Green gas doesn't smell that bad. Propane has a very, very, I'm trying to think of the word. It's there. Like, you can smell propane really. It's You can really smell it. So, if you don't like the smell of propane, probably don't run propane. I don't really mind the smell of propane, so I, I use propane if my friend lets me borrow a green gas gun or my brother lets me use this gun. If we have a propane tank. Because propane tanks aren't as expensive either. Green gas. So, this can of green gas you can see here was seven about $17. Just for this can. A box of 25 of these, you can get for $11. You can get about, let's say, this normal magazine, you could probably get three to four mags out of one of these. Like, you don't have to change this out until after about three or four mags. For green gas, if you're lucky, you'll get two to three mags out of one fill. So, this magazine doesn't do that, and I think I need a new one for my brother or something like that, but maybe the valve has to be tightened. But you can only get about, you can only get one mag out of one fill, this can of green gas. Like, this isn't going to fill one mag. You can fill tons of mags with a can. I'm saying you fill this once, you empty it, you got to fill it again. So that's the perk of having CO2. Is CO2 is a lot more consistent, and you can get a lot more shots out of it. But yes, yeah, so <clears throat> green gas is rather expensive. For a bigger can, it's probably like $20 to $30. For this can, the Elite Force Fuel, it's, probably, it's around 17 bucks at least on my local field. So... There's different prices. So, <clears throat> yeah, it all depends on your field's pricing for whatever you're buying. So, another thing about how to choose your sidearm. You already got through the gas, whether you live in a colder state where it gets really cold and you want to play all year round, or you live in a warm state where it's warm all year round. Green gas might be your way to go in the warmth. CO2, I know in New York, is my way to go. You can, however, if you're interested, let's say you've been playing airsoft for a while. If you're brand new to this, you probably shouldn't get into this now because it's super expensive. But if you're... you. Green gas is a good option if you're running HP if you plan on running HPA. Because HPA, if you don't know, is a big tank you wear in your back that you fill, almost like a mini air compressor. And a hose runs to your gun's magazine. Like you drill a hole in there and you get uh, CQB Russian or CQB Russian nozzles are usually the thing to go. It's just the company you you screw it in there and thread it to the threads on the nozzle, you put it in there. And then make sure it's all sealed, it's good to go. So HPA is a tank you wear in your back, almost like a mini air compressor or a mini scuba tank, and a hose runs to your gun. With green gas guns, no modding or anything you have to do, you have to drill a hole in the ma magazine, put the nozzle in, that's it, you're done. With, let's say you have an AEG and you want to run a Polar Star or HPA, you need to buy an engine or you need to get 
yeah, you generally need to buy an engine, which is super expensive. So I'll talk about that in a different video. Hopefully I'll have my friends in another video talking to me about my brother. I'll probably have in another video, but for right now, that's just, you can, green gas is a good option in New York. If a, you only play in the summer or B you want to run HPA. So yes. Um, now that we got through the gases and all that stuff, I'll talk about another way to choose your pistol. So I chose my 1911. This was the first airsoft gun of mine that I ever paid for with my money. I bought it like, well, it was my first airsoft gun. My friend let me borrow his gun every time I went to go play, but then I bought this gun with my own money and I love it. It's always worked for me. It's never not worked. The only problem I've ever had is I broke the feeder on this because it's plastic and I dropped it on a concrete floor. That's on my Instagram. If you follow me, if you don't follow my Instagram... I'll put it either in the description or somewhere in the video, but only problem I've ever had, this is a plastic feeder and I snapped it. That was all my fault though. That wasn't Elite Force's fault with the gun because they do offer mag rebuild kits for $15, I think for a normal magazine. So it comes with a feeder. So I'm just going to get one of those when I get money and then just fix my mag. So I'm looking for a job. I'll, I'll get it done. But um, when I picked this gun, I wanted, I was super OCD about, I wanted a full metal gun. I wanted a full metal handgun because before, I, this was my brother's, this was my friend's, and I bought it from my friend for super cheap because it was broken, and I gave it to my brother for Christmas, but he always let me hold and mess with this gun before it was broken, and I loved the full metal feeling. The only thing that's not metal is this polymer barrel, but it's, it, it's a professional training pistol. It's probably the real weight of a real M9, and I love the full metal. I love the... I love the slide clacking. I love everything about full metal. So my OCD about my handgun was I wanted it to be full metal because I wanted that realism. And the other thing was I found out about these have threaded tips. So when I went to my airsoft field, I was looking at pistols because I had money saved up to buy one. I just didn't know which one I wanted yet. So I, yeah, I went online and just kept looking at guns. I went to my local field. Someone had this gun, the 1911 Tech, and I ran out of ammo. And I said, oh, I'm out of ammo. Does anyone have a gun? Because we were in the middle of a firefight. I was like, does anybody have a gun? Bro, a kid threw me his 1911 Tech, and I shot it. And the kick, I've never shot the 1911 Tech before. I was holding it like this. The kick was so nice that it almost hit me in the face. Like, I was like, that is awesome kick. I want a gun that kicks like that. So I was like, all right, I'll probably get the 1911 Tech. And then I was like, well, what if I want to get the Elite Force Glock? So then I talked to Lane, the BB Warrior, who was there that day. I'll put a link to his channel in the description because he does amazing videos. Um, he's actually, the thumbnail is me and him of my last Airsoft Discussions video, episode one. Uh, that's actually a picture of me and him at River City. So I talked to him about getting green gas guns, and he was talking about his review of the Elite Force Glock that was coming out at the time. And he said that, one, we live in New York, probably shouldn't get green gas if you plan on playing in the winter and indoor, because it doesn't work in the cold. Two, he was telling me some pros and cons about the Glock and how the slides, and the he didn't know the slides were adjustable and stuff, and just stuff in general. So then I was like, all right, I want to get a CO2 gun. So then I went back, went to the 1911, and I was like, I think I'm set on that. I could have got the government issue one, which doesn't have the tech rail. But I wanted the tack rail so I could mount things such as flashlights on my gun. So, that is a huge perk of having a tack rail is you can mount lasers, lights, etc. Anyways, like I was saying, um, I picked the 1911 because it was full metal. It had a tack rail so I could attach things like lights to it if I played indoor. Or I just wanted to attach lights in general. My initial plan when I first got this gun, put a suppressor on it, put a optic mount on it, and put a flashlight on it because I wanted to build something like Ghost Recon, which I thought was super sick. I didn't end up doing that because one, money's tight when you're a teenager and you don't have a job yet. I'm looking for one. Two, uh, it's heavy. Like it's just heavy in general. I didn't end up getting the stuff till I put the flashlight and the suppressor on it. It's heavy. The reason I don't have a suppressor on it right now, I traded it to my buddy for my mag for a magpul stock and such. That uh, doesn't make any. It, it's not important to this video. But anyways, I picked 1911 threaded. It has a threaded tip. You can put 14 millimeter counterclockwise threaded suppressor on it or a tracer unit, anything of that sort and tech rail flashlight. So I just wanted to cover that. So my brother, he didn't pick this gun. I picked it for him because my friend was selling it for cheap and I do like the M9. It's nice. So the M9, it has a tack rail on it for flashlights. No threaded tip though, but you can buy a threaded tip 
off of, I think, Airsoft Megastore, Airsoft Station, in their parts section, sells threaded M9 tips. So, and I believe they're full metal. I don't know. I've never played with them, but you can switch them out if you really want to and you're into teching. If you're new and you really want to thread a tip, go with a different pistol. But, uh, magazine just standard, so, yes. So, standard green gas magazine, like I said, I don't know why I just went off instead of standard. Standard green gas magazine looks something like this. It looks more realistic than the CO2 ones. Well, yeah, it usually looks more realistic than the CO2 ones because CO2 ones have this big thing there. I know some guns, the CO2 goes up inside of it and you tighten it because it's fully covered. The 1911 mag still looks like a 1911 mag, though. Just, it has a CO2 cartridge in it. But magazine realism doesn't really matter. But standard green gas magazine looks something usually like this, depending on the pistol. It slips up in there like a normal magazine. So, another thing you should base your your handgun on is your budget. Obviously, you're probably not going to go on Evike and buy a three hundred dollar blue pistol, a training pistol, if you're new to the game. If you're real, if you're a veteran of the game, you've been playing for a long time and you still love it, go ahead, spend spend whatever you want on a pistol. So, Elite Force 1911 tech, it's full metal, the barrel's metal, everything is mentioned before. The grips are plastic, but that's standard because it's it's a grip, it doesn't have to be metal, which I'm probably going to switch to rubberized ones. But anyways, it's full metal, metal barrel, threaded tip, tack rail. This retails for about $120 for the pistol with just the normal magazine with it. I got a deal in Airsoft Station when I first bought this. It came with 1911, 2700... So when I got a deal, it came with the 1911, an extended magazine, which I have right here, came with an extended magazine, and this bottle of BBs. Obviously it was full at the time, but 2700.2s. So that retailed me for about $150. And in the box with the gun, you get the gun, magazine, and an Allen wrench to change that. Um, this came in a separate like bag in the package, and then this too. So... I'll put a link, if they're still doing that deal, I'll put a link to that in the description because that was an amazing deal. Because if you're buying, this alone is $120 plus tax. Well, some places don't charge tax, like the websites. But this magazine alone is like $30. So that would have already been $150. It's around, it's around, it's around $30. Bucks. It's not exactly. But this magazine is around $30 once you get into taxes. This is $120 plus some change of taxes. And this bottle itself is probably around 10-ish dollars. So that's already 160. So basically, I, I got a good deal. End of, end of story, I got a good deal. This pistol, I believe, last time I checked, retailed for about 150. There's no really deal for it. I just, I checked it after I bought it from my friend to see how much it was worth. Because I wanted to make sure it wasn't like fixing a shit gun and then giving it to my brother. So it's a good pistol. It really is. It just needs a different magazine. But since I discussed in another video, it's full auto now. He's going to be buying an M93R magazine, which comes down to about there. But anyways, this gun retails for around $150, I believe. And it's a solid pistol. It really is. If you have a good magazine that's not, like, dried out and everything that your friend didn't take care of, it's a really solid pistol. Like, when I was shooting it, it, well, it shot straight. For the shots it could get out before the mag was out of gas or leaked, the shots were pretty straight, and they shot pretty far. Like, they were... They were good for green, and it was winter out. It was cold. Like, it was shooting pretty consistently. Cons oh, God. It was shooting pretty consist consistently. It was shooting consistently for a green gas gun in the winter, which I don't know if it depends on the gun or the magazine, but this is a good gun, and it's easy to take apart. It's easy to take care of. It's easy to maintain. So, this is a really good pistol. KWA makes some of the best green gas guns on the market, to my knowledge. Because I hear a lot of green gas guns, and actually my friend commented, or someone I know I play with once in a while when he's there, commented in one of my videos saying that KWA makes the gas get the best gas blowbacks because they make gas blowback rifles, they make gas blowback pistols. I don't know if they make AEGs. I don't know. I don't know if they make AEGs. I know they make gas blowbacks. That's about it. But um, another thing you might want to base your uh, you're gone on if you're really if you're new to this you're not going to do it off an impression you're gonna buy just the guns you like so that's good if you're well, ugh, if you're 
I don't, I don't know if said older. If you're a, like a veteran to Airsoft, or like you've just been playing for a long time, and you really want to base your guns off of an impression kit, go for it. Be my guest. If you're new to Airsoft, I don't recommend it, because you're just putting in tons of money for a game that you don't fully know if you enjoy yet. If you, like I said, have been playing for a while, spend, spend as much money as you want. I don't care. But... I mean, if you're new to the game, spend as much money as you want. I don't care. I just don't recommend it. Because let's say you buy a $300 gun and then you go and play and you're like, ow, that hurt. I don't want to play anymore. Then um, you just blew like two paychecks right there, depending on what you get paid for your paycheck. So, and air stuff does not hurt that bad for the record if you've never played. Yes, it can hurt if you get shot in the tender spots. Like, Yes. It doesn't hurt that bad. I've been shot point blank in the chest, and I could barely feel it at that point. And I was wearing nothing but a t-shirt. So, if you're if you're asking that question right now, does airsoft hurt? It depends on where you get shot. So, and if you're wearing gear, probably not. If you're going out in nothing but jeans and a t-shirt in the summer, you're gonna feel it more than other times. But if you're wearing, if you get into it and you're wearing gear like a vest and a plate carrier and all that, you're not gonna feel it. Or like you, you'll feel it. You got hit, but you won't feel like. Oh my god, that hurts so bad. No, it's... no. So, just getting that question answered if you're asking it, because I know some people will answer it. Or some people will ask that question, because for a long time my brother asked that question. So, yes. Um, something else to base where you're buying your handgun off of is probably... This isn't always the case, but the size of your hands... If you know, if you don't know what like what size a gun is, if you've never held like an airsoft gun in your life, then don't I guess don't worry about it because you don't really know. But if you know, you if let's say you have really tiny hands, then and you want a Desert Eagle, that's probably not the gun for you because if you can barely hold it in your hands, then you're not going to be able to use it effectively in the game. Uh, you probably want something more like the 1911 with a slimmer grip. Or something like a Glock 19, because they're tiny, compared at least compared to my... I have about average to large-sized hands for my age, so... And the 1911 fits really snugly in there. Like, I got some wiggle room. So it's it's got a slim grip here, but it's not super fat. The, K to the M9 has a bit of a fatter grip, but it's shorter. So if you have super, super tiny hands, you should probably get a smaller gun. I know some guns come with different back straps. This piece here, like this one doesn't change it. Um, but some guns do come with different back straps. I believe the CZP09 does. I don't know that for sure. Don't quote me on that. But some guns come with different back pieces that you can slip out and on if you have different sized hands. Which I think is an amazing thing because it makes the gun more versatile between people. Like if you have tiny hands, you can switch the back strap out for a smaller grip. If you have bigger hands, you can switch the back strap out for a bigger grip. But that's not, you shouldn't base your entire buy off that. I'm just saying if you have, if you're a super small person and you want to buy a Desert Eagle, probably not going to work. But if you make it work, some, if you want to hold it like a rifle, if your hands are that tiny, go for it. Put, put a foregrip on it. I've seen people do it with the 1911. So that that's just for fun though. Um, so thanks for listening to my rant about guns, well, airsoft guns, and which ones you shouldn't, well, and how you should pick your guns. I'll recommend a few just to get ideas of them. So let's say you're looking for CO2 guns. They do make CO2 and um, they make CO2 and green gas variants. So make sure you pay attention to that when you're buying it. Don't buy a green gas one and then try to put a CO2 cartridge in it because uh, there's nowhere for you to put your cartridge, bud. So just keep that in mind. Pay, really do some research before you buy your first gun if you really want to get into it. Because that's what I did. I looked up. I looked through different guns for about a week before I finally decided to get my 1911. So, some guns I'm going to recommend to you. I'm going to recommend some CO2 ones first because I live in New York, like I said, and I like CO2 better because it's just more consistent and it's cheaper. So, obviously, number one, Elite Force 1911, whether it be the TAC or it be the normal, the government issue version. This gun is just overall amazing. It's never given me any shooting issues, ever. I think one time my slide got stuck... A little bit like this because I didn't oil it properly. Like this. It's stuck right now, actually. It has to be oiled again. And then it goes. So, it's that's the only big issue I've ever had. And it's not even a big issue. And if something breaks, there's rebuild kits online for, like, the entire gun. So, and then, obviously, I broke that because I dropped it. That was my fault. So, 
This is an amazing airsoft handgun. The Elite Force 1911 tech or government issue, best one of the best pistols on the market. It's just good. Or the Colt Railgun, which is basically this. It's just not Elite Force. I don't think. But also, if you want to go for a cheaper gun, look up the Elite Force Hater or the Elite Force H8R, I believe. Because, or it's a, I don't know, I'll put a description, I'll put a link to a bunch of different guns in the description. But the Elite Force Hater is a 10 round revolver made of polymer, which is a super durable plastic if you don't know. If you, like I said, if you've never played Airsoft before and you don't know what polymer is, it's a, it's a super durable plastic. Like, my M4, if I can grab it, this gun is made of polymer. And it is, it is solid. It is a solid gun. So, if you have good polymer on your gun, you're set. Gun's not going to break unless you purposely smash it on a wall or something. So, if you want, and also polymer's really light. So, if, you, if you're if you weakling and you don't want full metal, you want a polymer gun, like, or part polymer. I know some guns have polymer receivers. Go for it. But anyways, the Elite Force Hater is a revolver that's full polymer, to my knowledge. Well, there's some metal on it. I know the newer ones are some metal. But it's mostly polymer. Started there for a second, my bad. But it's a 90% polymer gun. And the clips are discs. I think they call them moon clips or Oreo discs. But they're really easy to load by hand. You don't need a speed loader. So that saves you money. And I'm pretty sure there's five of them in the box when you buy it. And the gun itself it retails for around $60, I believe. And it's it's a really good gun. Like, there's no hop-up in it. it. Well, there is, but it's fixed. So you can't adjust it. The new version, though, is going to be adjustable to my... As far as I've heard, it's going to be adjustable. But if you're buying the first version or the the early version, the one they have out now, uh, the hop up's fixed. But that's good if you're if for a pistol if you're playing CQB because it still shoots relatively far. But it's not you don't need to snipe people with it because it's a pistol. Um, it has rails on the top of it and on the lower. So if you want to put lights and lasers and optics and anything like that on it, go for it. And it's it's a pretty hefty looking revolver. It looks pretty neat. But uh, the Elite Force Hater. Retails for about $60, comes with five mags in it, they each hold 10 rounds, and it runs on CO2. So, it'll work in the cold, it'll work in the it'll work in the warmth, I mean, any gun works in the warmth, but it works in the cold, fine. So, and I've held one in my hand, I went to Rochester Airsoft, and if someone had one, they let me shoot it. It's awesome. It is, it's sick. I like it. Uh, another one is a CZP09 by ASG, I believe. So, the CO2 version, I've never shot it, but I hear a lot of really good things about it. Every time I see a review on the gun, they just say it's it's a great gun. They say it just works perfectly. And I like the look of it, too. There is a threaded version, so you can put a suppressor on it, and there is a tack rail on them, too. So you can put a light and laser on them if you really want. Uh, a last one I'm going to recommend for CO2 is probably the Elite Force CQB Revolver, because that is, it's for CQB, you can play with it indoor, and it uses shells that you buy and put BBs in, so it's got that realism aspect to it. And it's a nice gunmetal color. It's like gunmetal gray, and it's really nice. I like it. Uh, so for green gas guns, I'm going to recommend, obviously, this one. The KWA PTP M9 Tactical, because it's a really solid gun. It's full metal, except for the polymer outer barrel. And it's, if you really want to, don't do this if you don't want to avoid the warranty, because this already didn't have a warranty on it, because I bought it from my friend, and it was already busted or whatever. But if you buy it brand new, do not make it full auto if you don't want to avoid the warranty. Do not make it full auto if you don't want to avoid the warranty. Do not make it full auto if you do not want to avoid the warranty. Because if you do that and it breaks and you go to send it back, they're going to say, sorry, you modified it. Warranty doesn't cover it. So don't do that. Do not convert it to full auto if you do not want to avoid the warranty. Thank you. But like I was saying, it has a tack rail on it and it's, it's hefty, but it's not too heavy. And it's just it's a nice gun. Solid gun. If you want a green gas pistol, this is one of them to go to. Uh, a second green gas gun I'm going to recommend. Probably a Tokyo Marui High Kappa. If you just want a pistol, they're really good pistol primaries. If you... the poly, It is full polymer, I believe. I don't know that for sure, but I know the slide is polymer. The receiver might be metal. I believe it is. I don't know for sure. I've held a High Kappa like twice. My friend has one, and I've held it like twice. So, But as far as I've seen, it shoots really good. Everyone uses them in Speedsoft. Well, not everyone, but, like, uh, Amy from Gun Gamers. They were always talking about high cap. It was, like, TMs. They are very good pistols. They're not... 
They are, but aren't meant to run green gas, I've heard. But I think if you run green gas and you maintain it, you should be okay. I don't recommend it for a first handgun, but they are a good handgun for airsoft that run on green gas. So, and you can HPA tap them. A lot of people do that as well. They are very good. Like I said, I don't recommend them for a first handgun for airsoft, but I do recommend them. Uh, another one is the Elite Force Glock, the green gas version, because the green gas version is very good. I've shot it. It's solid. It's a, It feels like a real Glock. It's just good. It is a good handgun. Uh, the newer versions they're coming out with are supposed to be even better. They do have their flaws. Every airsoft gun has their flaws, but they are really solid. They're really nice guns. They're aw they're Glocks. I like I've said in my other video, I like Glocks. The CO2 ones, however, I don't really recommend the first generation ones that just came out. The Glock Gen 3s, the CO2 one, because my brother has it now. Because he like well, he likes the Glock. I don't recommend it because the way the hop up works, it feels really cheap and shitty. And you pay 110 bucks. It comes with an extra magazine. The magazines are built funny. They're they're okay. They're they're they work. They're okay guns. I don't like them. I prefer my 1911 more, just because it's more solid and I trust it. And it's more reliable. It's okay. The the Glock the it works. The CO2 one works. The Green Gas ones go for it. I recommend it all day. It's more exp It's like 180 dollars, but they're good guns. They're worth the price. But the CO2 ones, I'd stay away from until they put out the next generation of ones because they just, they're not that nice. And finally, a last green gas pistol I'd have to recommend is, I gotta think about this one because I just put out a lot of, couple, I just talked about a couple good ones. I had one on my head and I completely forgot about it. Ah, oh, what was it? Probably the, C, the, probably the PO9, the green gas one. The green gas one works really well too. The only difference is they're built a little bit different between CO2 because CO2 is more powerful. It has to withstand that. But the PO9 is just good in general. So, yeah. Thanks for watching uh, Airsoft Discussions Episode 2, how to pick your airsoft handgun or sidearm. And it's been Waski here, AJ, Andrew, whatever you want to call me. I'll uh, see you guys later. I'll be uploading these videos every Wednesday. I'm going to try to do it every Wednesday because I like having a routine video thing because I have airsoft bullshittery that comes out whenever I get time to play and record funny moments. I get other gameplay times whenever I get to record. And I don't always get to go out and play because, like, it's winter. So one, the, some of the places aren't even open. The closest one to me is in Rochester, and that's still, like, a 40-minute drive. So I don't get to play as much in winter. I play a lot of backyard with my brother. You don't want to watch that. It's just me and him shooting each other and being stupid for a good 45 minutes. <laughs> I mean, it's that's what Airsoft is. It's about having fun and being stupid sometimes, but it's more, it's not as entertaining to watch as if you went to a, if a, if it was recording me going to an actual field. It's just me and him laying in the snow, hiding, and then shooting each other in the ass every time they don't, we look away from the other person. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to put that up because maybe I'll do it in a video, but I'm not going to keep uploading that gameplay because no one wants to watch that. But anyways, thanks for watching. I'll uh, see you all next time. If you want to see more videos like this, like and subscribe. Comment anything you want, your favorite food even, because I read all my comments and generally respond to them all. If I don't, like I said in my other video, it's because I'm either sleeping, because it's if it's 3 a.m., or if maybe my phone doesn't go off because YouTube doesn't like to notify me sometimes. But uh, thanks again for watching. See you all next time, and be sure to tune in next Wednesday for the next Airsoft Discussions video when we'll probably be talking about face protection. So. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you all next time.